in looking at biomarker testing, uh, do you often see multiple driver mutations or is it typically uh, just a single driver mutation that uh, exists? Another fantastic question. Almost always, almost always, but not 100% of the time, there is a single oncogene driver for lung cancer. Meaning that if a patient has a uh, um, biomarker testing done and the, the NGS report shows an EGFR mutation, probably there isn't going to be also an ALK rearrangement or a KRAS mutation. If a patient's NGS report comes back showing a HER2 mutation, HER2 mutation, there probably isn't also going to be a classical EGFR mutation. There have been very rare case reports where more than one oncogen driver has been identified in a patient's lung cancer at initial diagnosis. Now, the timing of the biomarker testing matters. Increasingly, for patients who do have an actionable target, like an EGFR mutation or an ALK rearrangement identified in their lung cancer, and they start out with targeted therapy and appropriately so, when their cancer relapses and starts growing again, some oncologists repeat the biopsy and redo the gene testing. At that time point, often we do find mutations in more than one oncogene driver, but that is a very distinct scenario from the initial diagnosis of lung cancer um, for the purposes of the treatment decision-making at, at that time point. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, so getting into some specific uh, drivers of cancer in non-small cell lung, uh, it sounds like EGFR is a pretty common mm -hmm. uh, mutation. Uh, could you tell us more about the EGFR mutations uh, that exist and what what treatment options uh, are available for those? You've mentioned osimertinib, of course, uh, but I know there's a few. I could spend multiple hours talking about this <laughs> question because there are so many layers to the discussion about EGFR mutation. So first, not all EGFR mutations are the same. There are many subtypes of EGFR mutations with different treatment paradigms in lung cancer. Often when we use the term EGFR mutated lung cancer, we are referring to lung cancers with classical EGFR mutations. These are the most common EGFR mutations that we see in lung cancer. Specifically, there are two classical EGFR mutations. One is EGFR exon 19 deletion, and two is EGFR L858R mutation. These are the ones where the pill that we talked about, the EGFR inhibitor, osimertinib and others have been used for years showing really great effectiveness. But there are other EGFR mutations too, where pills like osimertinib don't work as well, and where we pull in different EGFR targeted therapies or different treatment strategies. So that's an important point to make. So if you're told that your lung cancer has an EGFR mutation, it's important to learn, well, what kind of EGFR mutation is it? Because that affects what treatment is the optimal one to go to um, as a next step. The second point to make about EGFR mutations is that there are um, a number of different EGFR targeted strategies that are being used in the clinic now where uh, we often talk about drug like osimertinib, first treatment option when you're initially diagnosed, but to know that there are later treatment options that are also directed towards the EGFR mutated lung cancer that your oncologist will be able to turn to if the cancer were to grow on a pill like osimertinib. Okay, so um, having a biomarker identified in lung cancer is not only important for that first treatment decision, but it also affects subsequent treatments that represent options for you and also affects the optimal clinical trials 
to consider down the line as well. The final third point I will make is that EGFR mutated lung cancer um, is the first subtype of lung cancer where we have moved targeted therapy from being used only in patients with advanced stage lung cancer to now being used for earlier stage as well. And so EGFR mutated lung cancer, let's say uh, a patient has stage one or stage two EGFR mutated lung cancer that was resected surgically. Okay, then the patient received post-operative chemotherapy. A couple years ago, that may have been the end of it, but now we do recommend following with post-operative EGFR inhibitor targeted therapy because we have a clinical trial data that show that doing so can improve the patient's disease-free survival and overall survival. Um, and so that this is one subtype of lung cancer where definitely targeted therapy is used in earlier stage lung cancer.